In this lesson, we're going to discuss the difference between a parameter and a statistic. These two concepts are fairly similar, but there are subtle differences. It'll be important for us to identify what those subtle differences are. We're going to begin our discussion by looking at the average height of U.S. women. And Wikipedia tells us that on average, U.S. women are 5 feet 4 inches tall, or 1.622 meters tall. And there's two fundamental questions we have to ask. How was that number calculated? And is it correct? And looking at it this way, there are many, many, many U.S. women. Were all of them measured to determine the average, or was some other strategy used? And we can get at that answer by thinking about the difference between a parameter and a statistic. A parameter is a number that reflects a characteristic of a population. And what is a population? A population is the entire group to be studied. So in our example, the population would be the heights of all U.S. women. A statistic represents a characteristic of a sample. So a sample is a smaller subset take a small group of an entire population and that small group is supposed to represent the entire population. So we make inferences about a larger group by looking at the results of a smaller group. So in our example the sample is probably a relatively small collection of heights. Could be 30, could be 50. I'm guessing it may have been 500 women. Maybe they measured 500 women and from those 500 women we are going to make an inference about the average height of the 150 million women that are in the United States. We have notation that we use. For mean, if we're talking about a parameter, we use the symbol mu. That is a Greek letter that represents mean. For a statistic, we use the symbol x bar, x with a line over it. For the standard deviation, we also use a Greek letter to represent a parameter. The Greek letter small sigma is used to represent standard deviation, and we use S to represent a statistic. And again, remember that parameter is a number that reflects the entire population. So if we wanted to have a parameter for the standard deviation of the heights of U.S. women, we would need all 150 million women measured to be able to call that a parameter. Likely, if we have the standard deviation for heights of American women, it's probably going to be a statistic, S, since that is a more reasonable thing to measure. So as we said here, the average uh, height of U.S. women is 64 inches, and the standard deviation is about 2.8 inches. So indeed, X bar is what we're looking at here, would be 64 inches, and S, standard deviation, which is a statistic, is 2.8 inches. Okay. Well, um, are there times when we might be able to get parameters? And looking at the average age of graduate students at the University of Illinois at Chicago, we are told that their average age is about 30.7 years. Now, there's a relatively small number of UIC graduate students, so that enables us to ask the question, is this a parameter or is this a statistic? You really have no way of knowing this. But I would say since it's easy, we have a relatively small number of people, maybe a thousand graduate students, maybe two thousand graduate students, and their ages are all on file with the university. It seems reasonable to think that all of those ages could have been used for us to determine what the average age was. So if that's the case, we can guess more than likely in this case that this is a parameter and that average for all UIC graduate students, 30.7, would be represented by mu, since mu is a symbol that we use for a parameter. Okay, let's take a look at Minitab and see how some of these ideas are represented. I am going to generate 50 numbers. I'm going to say random 50C1. And I want these numbers to be normally distributed. So I'm going to say normal. Forty, ten, period. And these are going to generate some numbers. 
But before they do that, let's think about what this means. Generating 50 numbers, normal 4010 means it is coming from a population with a mean of 40 and a standard deviation of 10. So in this situation, 40 represents a parameter and 10 represents a statistic. So think about it this way. Imagine we have an infinite number of data points from this population. An infinite number of data points would give us a mean of 40 and a standard deviation of 10. But we only have 50, so will we get a mean of exactly 40? Will we get a standard deviation of exactly 10? Well, let's take a look. We've generated the numbers, and uh, we can go ahead and describe those numbers and see what sort of information we have. We expected the mean to be about 40. 40 was the parameter. We have a mean of 40.08. 40.08 is the statistic. We expected the standard deviation to be 10. 10 is the parameter. We have a standard deviation of 8.66. 8.66 is a statistic. So we can say in this case, in this case, mu, the parameter, equals 40. But x bar, the statistic, equals 40.08. And you can see they're relatively close. And sigma, the parameter, equals 10. But s, the statistic, equals 8.66. And if you want, you can take a look at the shape of this distribution. We will look at a histogram of C1. And it was supposed to be a normal distribution with a mean of 40 and a standard deviation of 10. We recognize our statistics are a little bit different. We look at the picture, and you can see that it looks like it's essentially in that, um, that general sort of shape. Now, what if instead I had said random 1 million C1, semicolon, normal, 4010. So again, what I have is, is I have a data set that is supposed to have a parameter mean of 40 and a sigma standard deviation of 10. But I have 1 million numbers here. And we'll give the computer some time to generate those 1 million numbers. And looking at those 1 million numbers, if we do the describe command this time, we also store that in C1, let's see what those look like. We have 40.017. So with a million numbers, the mean x bar is very close to the mean mu. And the standard deviation 9.996 S, 9.996, is very close to the standard deviation sigma, 10. So if you want to get approximations for the parameters, the best way to do that is to go ahead and go with a very, very large data set. So here's a, here's a question I could ask. What is mu and what is sigma? for a chi-square 20 distribution. Now, you don't know what chi-square 20 is. But we can get a pretty good approximation for that if we use a very, very large data set. So again, I'm going to say random 1 million. Call it C1 again, so we'll overwrite what we had before. Semicolon. Chi-square, C-H-I-S-Q, 20, period. And we will let the computer generate those numbers. It's done it. And then we'll say, describe C1. And here you will notice the mean is 19.992. So I would expect that mu is approximately 19.992. I will assume that that's 20. And we'll say sigma is approximately what do we have for sigma? Sigma is approximately 6.328. But right now, those are simply statistics.